Hi there. I'm here with my friend James McPeak, manager at Dundee. How are you, James? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, um, it's, see, it's it's a strange time for everyone. Oh. Yeah, I'm hoping, hoping everybody out there is safe and well, but that, that's the main thing. But we're finding it tough, as everybody is. It's, mm. it's, it's it's a strange time in the sense that we've never experienced it before. Nobody has, so we can't go for, for any sort of guidance. But but no, we're okay as a family. Great, great. And, that, and you're right, that's spot on. You know, no one, you know, you, you couldn't predict this and no one knows how it's going to kind of unfold as well, although it will come to an end. It, it's, it's, it's making the best of it, isn't it? And trying to get some sort of structures, you know, for yourself, your family and for the club as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, I've got, we've got Gordon Strachan as a technical director. Mm. He's been the national team manager. He's been manager of one of the biggest clubs in the Celtic and he's, He's been manager of a few teams in the English Premier League and a real distinguished playing career as well at all clubs. He's not yeah. experienced anything like this. No. You'd think with Gordon in there, uh, uh, Jimmy Nicol, again, who is vastly experienced out of the yeah. own ass, but I can't. It, it, it's, it's, it is, it's that, that strange a situation, but you're right. We've got to find the positives. The positives are for me. I've got a, a nine-month-old who Brilliant. six weeks I've got to see a lot more of. Yeah. I'm not at my work, so um, and I got lucky with my middle child as well with, with the five year old Sophie because I was injured at the time, right? So I wasn't at the club as much. Really, I missed yeah. spells of her development. Yeah. So there's the positives, but yeah. we've just got to hope everybody can come through this healthy. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they will. I think you've touched on something there that I think people that maybe are not involved in professional sport or or, or football and look in. It, it almost likes, it looks always glamorous. And you just touched on a great point there, which someone, other people mentioned to me is, is the sacrifices you make sometimes well, through playing a sport, that actually you miss out on your kids' development because you're traveling or you're at the club or, or you know, you've got other things. Did you notice that now when you reflect? Yeah, but as a player, it, I noticed it as a player. Um, like, I can remember, just going back to my playing days when at Coventry, we we played Cardiff on box. Mm. Uh, and my mum and dad were down for Christmas. It was just, Don wasn't my wife at the time, or we were maybe just married. Mm. Um, but we had, we had to have Christmas dinner at 1pm, mm. whatever day it was. Christmas, yeah. obviously, but I can't remember if it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. 1pm, yeah. um, get ready. We trained at night and travelled to Cardiff. Yeah. So you're used to the sacrifices, but when the kids come along, I think it's a little bit different. Mm. Um, but then going into the, the coaching and the management side, it's, it's a, even a whole new ball yeah. because the others and the input and the, the workload magnifies massively. Yeah. Yeah. And I missed my, believe in that, it's terrible, one of my daughter's birthday parties mm. because we had a game. We had the party. Mm. We could only get the party booked for the Saturday. The, the, yeah. Well, in the Sunday, we left it that late, and then I've got my wife taking my daughter. But, but they understand, and yeah. Although they're five and six, and nine months, as I say, but yeah. it's been been with me for, for the very start of my career, so she gets what, yeah, well, is. But there is there's a human side to it that, that I don't think that it goes unnoticed at times, yeah, definitely. And that, that certainly, if there's a positive for me that's coming out of this, is, is that that. Mm. You've got to find positives, of course. Yeah. It's the same with injury, whatever you're going through, yeah. find a positive. And the positive for me is I've got to spend a lot more time with the girls. Brilliant, brilliant. What, how, see, in your playing career, what coaches influenced you? Who, who, who influenced how you played or your approach to, to the game the most? It's about, probably, it's a weird one. I started off as a striker. Uh, uh, Made my debut at Livingston as a striker. I had coaches at someone you know very well, John Robertson. Yeah. Who it's, it's funny now I'm managing against. Yeah. Um, he was one of my first coaches at youth team level. Um, and, and then going along, but it wasn't until Archie Knox and Richard got to Livingston. Archie must have seen something. Um, yeah. In training, he'd make me centre back and then in reserve games, centre back and then I kind of pushed on to becoming a centre-back, but then Robbo come back as a man. And, and to be fair to Robbo, he had the, he had the, the bravery to play me as a centre-back. Mm. But 
probably coaches and, and people, they've all had an influence, but there's a couple of players as well. Because yeah. bearing in mind, I'm if we're going for a striker, a centre back is yeah. the opposite. Um, and I'm glad I've done it because I wouldn't be sitting here speaking to you because I've never had a career as a striker. <laughs> Um, and that's not me just say that that's the truth but Dave Mackay who now my first team coach at, yeah. at Dundee yeah. with Stephen Tweed who, yeah. who was a player at Livingston at the time made it easy for me as mm. a to learn so those two along with Archie and Robbo mm. um, helped me in that sense but it was when I went to England I found mm. that I, the coaches down there that's when I took a real interest in coaching and and getting into what training was all about. I worked with Coleman at Coventry. And um, had Steve Keane, who's a coach on the yep. SFA courses now, who was magnificent. Mm. Eve Harrison, who had been England assistant manager. Um, he'd been Middles, Middlesbrough's assistant mm. manager under Steve McLaren when they got to the UEFA Cup final. So there's been a whole host. And then as you get older, I started finding myself asking questions as well. So mm. when Back up the road to Hibs, Pat Fenlon was great with me. I was a senior player coming back from injury, but it was only maybe then I had the, the confidence to go and say, why were we doing that? Or yeah. what's the reason we're doing this? Mm. It developed into Paul Hartley, yeah. who again was great with me at Dundee. And, and particularly when I got injured, Paul allowed me to want the coaching side of it. Mm. Now, Paul will say it was because he valued my opinion. Mm. Whether or not, I'm not so sure. Mm. But I think what he done was he showed great man management because yeah. it oh, yeah. me, kept me interested. Yeah. Um, it kept me going. And Neil McCann, very similar as well, in a different way. I was away for the first team, but I was in under 18. He let me go and make mistakes and he was always there for advice. And then you've obviously got the SFA courses, yeah. which uh, I've done my B, my A, mm. my pro licence through that. And some of spoke with Donald Park. Yeah. Donald Park and Jim Fleeton were on every all my free courses. Yeah. And the the the, the help one, not, not just the help, but the way they push you. Mm. Um to and they didn't make it easy. Yeah. Because you were a player and, and I think that there's a there's maybe a view out there that players get it easier than mm. people that come onto these courses that, that haven't maybe been playing. Mm. But I've seen it it's not. For me that's mm. not the case, particularly in, in the A and the pro or that's You've got to put the work in. If you don't put the work in, you're no good. You've seen it yourself. You've yeah. on the courses. You've been a great help to us on the courses as well. But it's so there's a, there's a full there's a, a big mix eh? mm. a lot from from a lot of different people, and I, I kind of I recognise that quite quick that I wanted to be a coach. Yeah, probably at about 25, 24, 25, and I went to England. I thought, no, oh, I like this. I want to be on the field with, with players and. It was then the question started, which probably annoyed every coach I worked with. And I think eventually they found out I wasn't yeah. I wasn't questioning them for how he, you're doing it wrong. I was I was genuinely interested in what they were doing. So probably for then in the notes, you take the notes in, you the mental notes in, yeah. you write the stuff down and it's now developed on and you put everything on your computer or what a whole mix there's yeah. not a person. That's superb, Jibs, because that was the question I was going to ask you on the back of that, where you were saying you are going to you know, England and then you were coming back and you were asking questions. Did you start, because did you start to see the game differently when you went to England? You know, so rather than just the position you were playing, did you start to see things differently? Was it a kind of aha moment or was it just gradual? You know, where you're seeing the whole park or the... No, I think there, it was a completely different way of coaching. Mm. Yeah. No, I went from Livingston, and which is the championship now. Mm. I think at the time it was League One, so the, the league below the Premier League in Scotland, mm. um, to the championship in England. Mm. Still the championship in England. Very tough league, um, as we know. So it was a, a massive jump for me yeah. um, in terms of the class of player I was playing against. Mm. Respected. People up here because bear in mind at that time Stephen Dobie was in the championship at Queen yeah. if he was went on and had a fantastic career yeah. I mean he was a fantastic player then as well yeah. he had to go and develop and play with good players but I went down in the level of coaching I think in the level of the detail of the work we've done off the ball on the ball yeah. for me it just everything went up a notch yeah. the intensity again no disrespect but the players were better yeah. 
and that had, that made me better because mm-hmm. it was in me. I had to be, I had to be on it every day, or I was I found myself kind of struggling in training, yeah. and it's bad enough struggling in a game. But at the start, and I'll be honest, I found myself struggling in training with some real top players at the time. So, yeah. and then the, the complete outlook on how the week was structured, I took a real influence in that. And yeah. when Chris Coleman would be working on the opposition, when he'd be working on our stuff, and kind of. Not so much a framework, I don't know if that's the right word, but I kind of took a real interest in how he'd done it and, and how he worked. And then A.D. Boothroyd came in, who's now England under 21's yeah. manager, and A.D. was very, very... His method was just complete tactics. Yeah. He worked from... We were in every Sunday after for a recovery, and from the Sunday, we were working tactically on what was going to happen the next week. And that, I'd never seen that. That level of detail. Yeah. AD, no, I'm not saying who was better. Yeah. I loved Chris Coleman and I loved his ways. AD's was different. Mm. Um, at times for me, it was very intense that sometimes, particularly when you were in the team, you felt you were doing too much tactical stuff. You know, players are like you were yeah. in yeah. games. But but then, and it's, I look back on that now and I wish I'd have concentrated more on kind of the stuff he'd done as well. Yeah. He's, his, the one thing about being in his team is you know exactly what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was covered throughout the week. Yeah. And Chris's was the same. Chris was Chris was the best player I've ever worked with. Um, but but AD's detail was was a real eye opener for me. Yeah. What he done. That's it's incredible because what you're describing, and I think for your own philosophy, if we call it that, James L is is very much almost a modern coaching. Approach, isn't it? Where because I, I, the clubs I'm involved in and throughout things, the amount of information and detail now given to players or the 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 input expected back from them is is has go, gone up incredibly. I think. Yeah, well, you have you have seen it. You've been yeah. on you've been on yeah. the coaches as long as yeah. me, yeah. longer because you yeah. were. Running. Is it too much? I don't know, mm. but when. I don't think it is because I'll use Graham Dorans for an example. Yeah. He was one of my players at the minute. Mm. Yeah, he was my teammate at Livingston. Yeah. Um, he's been on in a fantastic career mm. in England. And when you ask him, and I asked him the question, yeah. who's the best, best manager he worked with? And he'll not mind me saying it. I'm not yeah. best, but he says he loved working with Roy Hodgson. Right. Is it because just the detail, you know what yeah. you're doing? And then and you're going, ah, no, that's, that's somebody that's played at the highest level. That's somebody that technically very gifted, but he, he loves doing the tactical side of the game. Yeah. So, yeah. again, there's the English thing for me. The players coming up from England expect that. Yeah. Because they, they're used to it in Scotland. I think it's it is getting better. Yeah. And but I can remember when training was just warm up, the wee boxes, games, that was you. Yeah. And yeah. Sometimes you've done shapes, sometimes you yeah. get named at quarter two on a Saturday. Now I'm getting back. 10 years ago before, before I went to England because it, it has evolved and, mm. and I think up here now we, you're a lot better at, mm. at the other side of it and with people like, like Brendan Rogers mm. and these top coaches have, have obviously helped that you know, Neil Lennon for example yeah. and Gerard the Rangers and we're getting, getting these these coaches in can only help our game just because yeah. of people they've worked with but it has changed is the information too much for me I don't think so I don't think because They'll we'll only take so much on board anyway. Yeah. You can give them it all, and what you've got to be aware of is that when you're giving them it, they're not going to take it all in. Yeah. So that's when you can't be critical. Yeah. If you're accepting that they can't take it all in, then you can't come in at half time or full time and have a right go at them for, for something that you you maybe go, well, we're yeah. not going to take everything in because we're giving them how much you want them to. Yeah. But again, they're human beings. Yeah. yeah. And we're all we're all striving to win a game of football yeah. every day, and that can change in the yeah. uh, in an instant. So it's it's not too much. Certainly, as a player, I loved it. Yeah, and from and I know the players do, but you get some that just want to get out and play. Yeah, it's different individuals. Yeah, yeah. mindsets. I know you you mentioned earlier um, about just the people that you've surrounded yourself with in in, in Dundee there and and. Kevin Thompson, I was speaking to a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about the influence Gordon Strachan had on him, and exactly what you were saying. 
the level of thought and detail put into the game. Um, how, how important is it, do you think, to have mentors or people around you as a coach? For a young coach or a young manager, it's in my yeah. opinion, it's the most important thing. Um, yeah. And it was it was what I, it's something I, and, and probably something I've I've had in my, my head for a while is who do you, who's your staff going to be? Now yeah. you must of course, me and Dave McKay, we used to get fleets used to hammer us all the time. Yeah. We're sitting together, we would never speak or whatever. Or, <laughs> We were taking everything in and bearing in mind, we were probably the two youngest in the course yeah. at the time. And well, I was certainly the youngest in the pro license, and it was some big characters on that. But Fleet's mm-hmm. just take in and say, Oh, there's a chuckle brothers, blah, blah, blah. But I always knew, and be playing with Dave and having a relationship with Dave, that if I got a job that allowed me to bring him in, yeah. I'd bring him in. And it was kind of the same if he got the job, yeah. he was going to bring that was it, the way it was working. Yeah. The job at Sterling, and I was still trying to get back fit, so that yeah. wasn't the right time. Uh, um, Jimmy Nichols, somebody yeah. I worked with, vastly experienced, yeah. as I say, he's played in two World Cups, he's been yeah. played for Manchester United, yeah. managed Rafe Rovers, he's been assisting at Rangers, yeah. experience. So I needed that. Um, but then Gordon, as well, and, and Poppy, that has been, it's been different because Gordon's there, one on the phone, anything. Mm. And again, the only question I've ever asked Gordon, he can answer, has been about this yeah. situation, yeah. Which, which nobody in the world can answer. Yeah. I've went to Gordon with a whole host of things, and the help he's given me has been massive. Mm. And it's, it's, you say a help, it's, it's more a guidance. Like, yeah. He says to me at the start, I'll never tell you what to do. Like, you yeah. know, find, find your way. But I'll question you and I'll ask mm. you, why did you do that? Why, why did you think that way? And he has. But what, what I found he's helped me with and helped me greatly is being with defeat. Mm. And again, it's you can go on the courses, you can do what you want, but but who who teaches you what yeah. your emotions are going to be like after you've lost six two away to your yeah. Big rival? Yeah. For example, now it's not something I like to talk about. Yeah. But it's something I've had to deal with. I see. Yeah. And having I think having Gordon there that night for me was huge. Yeah. And having him there to go Go to with things that maybe I'm not sure about. Yeah. And that's no that's no weakness. That's just no. being honest because I'm I'm yeah. a manager. And and not even just that. See if I was an experienced manager, and I know some do, I still phone Gordon because yeah. was, he's been at I know experienced managers do I'll not name them because it's not yeah. my case. But they go to Gordon because one Kevin says he's yeah. how 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 far he is in the game. Yeah. Mm. But what I find is he, he makes the most complex situation so simple for me. Yeah, yeah. I can ask him something that's been bugging me all night and I've not slept. And Gordon mm. will give me the most simplest answer within seconds. Yeah. Like, How did he just do that? Like in that, oh, yeah. obviously through a year's experience, because he's, yeah. he's in his struggles. He's got home for games, he's not been able to sleep, he's been annoyed, yeah. frustrated. But, but having him there and yeah. on the end of the phone whether he's but the now on the end of the phone yeah. or where we're in at the club and I can go and just sit have a cup of tea and yeah. it's informal yeah and it's it's great and, and he opens up and he, he's very honest with me yeah that's brilliant no it's, it's you, you can't buy it and I don't think you can teach it either it's good, it's good as a course he's got, I think what I've learned over the last seven eight months working with Jim mm. Gordon's track and Dave as well mm. I'm passing him out because mm. Three completely different people at mm. completely different stages of their career. Mm. Been a huge, huge help to me now. There are, there's others in my staff mm. that I've not brought up. My analyst, like my, the, the media officer, Martin Hartley, who helps me. And Lorraine, the, the, mm. one of the tight, Lorraine, the yeah. tight knit, knit group that, that I believe is so important. And that yeah. and the things that that through my career I've watched and any time I've seen a successful team it seems to be where there's a close-knit group of staff yeah. as well it's, it's yeah. valuable and so important in a football club yeah I, I think that's a great answer Jim because I think we'll start, again something what people forget when they're looking at football or managers or people going through things is you actually tend to forget they're human you know so you're describing 
how do you, you know, it's a human feeling about how you feel after something you that hasn't gone what you want, how you want it to go. You feel passionately about it. You know, it's it's all very well for people to say, I think, well, you learn from it, isn't it? You know, that's I, what a, a group says. Oh, you just, no feeling yet. You just learn from it. But you're I feeling know. shit. You know? I know, and that's what I think on, on that. They should, that should never happen again. And, and because you, you, but again, we're in a game that's so unpredictable. Uh, and and to just to be able to turn and say, oh, or you, or you learn for that defeat, well, there's a process to learn for that. Yeah. You've got, you, you have, like, that's, that's the one thing I will say, and that's what Gordon says to me, is you're going to hurt this weekend. Yeah. Anytime you get beat, it's going to hurt you. Yeah. A level that, you now I, I was a bad loser as a player. Every player, yeah. I think that yeah. they are anyway, but certainly I was a very bad loser as a player. And I think you come home and being, be terrible around the house and being a man. Yeah. But as a manager, again, we talk about that intensifies. Yeah. What and Gordon's been very good at that, getting me, getting me probably more to not take it home with me as such. Yeah. He, he's aware I've got, I've got three young kids, I've got a wife. Mm. So mm. I, we're getting beaten. I'm coming home and I'm ruining their weekend. So yeah. that's a human side you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. The yes, yeah, as it a job and it's a very important job. Football was so important, but. Our families is the most important. Yeah. Um, and that's that's something that throughout the season I've got really, I feel I've got better at. Okay. People have told me I've got better at not bringing it home. But it was all new to me. Yeah. So what was right, what was wrong. And yeah. I had a, I've worked it out. I don't think I've completely worked it out because I still come home and there's time I'm at three o'clock in the morning and watching the game still. Yeah. When I've been advised not to. Yeah. But I'm getting better at it and I'm, I'm still going to. I'm still yeah. I get better at it every day. I I I think that's a right hard thing, isn't it? it? It's really hard, you know, for us all. If you're involved in a in a area like yourself, managing a football club, which can be all consuming that you're passionate about. And I think we spoke about that in the groups in, in the pro licenses. You have to watch, isn't it? How you manage your energy. Because if you don't watch, the ones closest to us get what's left. You know, so they get almost the worst part of us, and everyone else gets the best part of us. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a great that's a great way to put it. That's what I was finding was happening. Mm-hmm. We're getting beaten straight away. I'm going, right, I need to lift this place on Monday morning as soon as I'm yeah. in. Now, this might have been a Friday night defeat. Mm-hmm. I'm driving down the road on Friday night. I'm miserable Saturday yeah. Sunday. in the house. No, bear in mind, three young kids, a wife. Yeah. Probably haven't seen me all week because I've been yeah. left the house at yeah. half past six in the morning. Not getting to six o'clock at night. I've maybe seen me a few hours a night, maximum. Um, and then my full weekend's taken up with watching games and yeah. being, being annoyed. Yeah. But in my head, I'm going, I need to get in and get these 22 players Give them the means you say on the Monday to lift them. Uh, I'll flip that because the people that are important are the ones that I'm driving down the road to. Yeah. The ones that I'm out there doing it for. So, yeah. and where, where is the balance? How do you find that balance? Have I found it? I, I'm finding it and I, I do believe I'm finding it. Mm. Um, of course, when you win, it doesn't become an issue. Yeah. So, it's the, the easy thing is when you win, but we're well, in a game where you don't win every week. Don't perform every week. You get stuck. You yeah. and it, it can it, it can really it can overawe you, and it can it can really take over your life if you start with the stick and the yeah things in the press. And so, so you've got that you've got that to deal with as well yeah. when you're driving down the road and you're going. What are you saying about me? Uh-huh. Just try to develop a better for a better way of putting it, a mindset that, that you can deal with everything, but. Just to give the, the most important people to yeah. me is my wife and my three kids yeah. the best of me yeah. it's best it can be of me after a defeat yeah. I think they would admit that I'm getting better at it but I've got a, a long way to go and I don't think I'll ever be no. after a defeat but, but and I think that's the thing James you know for us all that's passionate about what you, what you do isn't it there's you, you don't want to kind of put a cap on the passion but then you, it's just having an awareness, oh, right, that's me going into that almost a darker place again. Let's bring myself back to my family, isn't it? It's just an ongoing process. I don't think anyone ever really cracks it and says, right, 
I've got it good now. It's just, it's it's just an ongoing process. And I suppose the final thing I'd say about that is, and and you epitomise it when you're speaking, you don't become, you don't become really good at something by having a kind of almost a middle of the road attitude, do you? You don't go, I'm going to be a really great manager, but I'm kind of just going to go at it fifty percent. I think. No. That's- no, but in, in, I think in management and coaching in particular, because uh, you see the the work that, that goes into it, mm-hmm. and again, you you find that when you go into the job and the, the courses are great, mm-hmm. everything you get. But again, it's you find out so much which, which happens when you're in the job, and it's I'm glad of a few months. I think we, we do start back. Albeit when everything's safe and we can do it again, I, I'll, I'll go back to it. It's the important thing is everybody's health. So when we start back, everybody's healthy. That uh, I'm glad I've had eight months. You know, I can see why people talk about rookie managers, and I'm, I still, I'm not saying I'm experienced now, not by any stretch of imagination, but I've experienced a lot. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I can't say in eight months, whether that be a problem with a player, mm-hmm. a heavy defeat, mm-hmm. or a runny games and we've not won in three and I've got. So many fans not wanting me in the job, so that's that's helped. But but the workload is enormous. Yeah, I think that's why you need you need people you can trust. Yeah, and people that that, that know the way you work and not just know but believe in the way you work mm-hmm. because you're asking them to carry out and you are you hoping they can take a, a real burden off your shoulder yeah. at times and and do some of that work. And that's why I feel I'm very lucky with the staff I've got. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. And you can hear that, how much you appreciate them and what you're saying and in your voice. And how how important do you think it is as a as a manager of a coach to have that network around you? Think you think that's essential or because you hear, you know, what you would see here maybe in the past is someone that says, right, I'm just going to take responsibility for everything. Do you think it's more difficult to do that these days? I think I think that could still be that will still be some people's approach. Um, I don't think I'm in this. Even if I had, if this was my opinion for nearly mm. or even starting courses, I always I always believe that you need your staff. Your most important, yeah. you know, say your players and your yeah. you you need the staff round about you now. Go back to, I don't know if you you, you seen Andres Villas Boas on the, the pro license if you were there. I missed him, I. But he, he's got a staff of eight, I think. I'm just yeah. Kidding. And he, I think it was a Marseille job he spoke about. Anyway, so anywhere he goes, now he, he's, he's earned us. Mm-hmm. He's what he's done. So he's, he's eight, how many eight staff or how many seven staff, whatever it is. So we'll say it, how many seven mm-hmm. other other staff. And I think it was a Marseille, Marseille or Bordeaux. It was... One of, one, of, one of those jobs um, and they didn't allow him to take the goalkeeping coach mm. because they at the time they had a goalkeeping coach at that club mm. that had been there for years and was a legend just knocked the job back yeah and, amazing and yeah. He, he'd been out of work for yeah. for a while um, he was desperate to get back in I can't remember what the job before was but he, he hadn't done too great but he knocked it back because he wasn't allowed to bring his goalkeeping coach. But even before that, and, and that's that's not why I, I value my staff so so high. Yeah. But I, I just you need them with you. Yeah. And you need people you can trust because th- th- those are the people that will will one help you in a crisis, yeah. but they'll they'll two keep you grounded when things aren't right. And and even when you're standing in the side, you, I, I believe and I, I've got it. I think you need people that will tell you when you're wrong. Yeah. Um, and that's the biggest thing for me is, yeah. and that's what I ask, when, look, if you think I'm making a wrong call here, please tell me. Mm-hmm. Do not let me put this sub on or do not let me make this decision. If you think it's wrong, no, tell me. And I might still disagree because at the end of the yeah. day, I've got, to, yeah. I've got to make the call. But, but we, I think we have an open, a kind of open way working yeah. with that we can we can get our points across and it's not a not a disrespectful thing it's not a somebody can come in and say that I didn't agree with what you done mm. but tell me why why let's work it and that'll, that'll make us better 
Yeah. I think having Gordon there, having Jimmy there is, is great as well because me and Dave are picking that up for the day Yeah, yeah. So Dave's developing. Yeah. Well every day because he's... And then, then you go to your video analyst, yeah. all people, Stephen, who was Stephen yeah. at the club. Yeah. He, he goes to Gordon. So yeah. what that kind of influence in our football club at the minute that we can all go to but yeah, I think what I mean that I say for the start was is I'll, I'll never be afraid to ask questions and I'll keep mm-hmm. asking questions because I think when you stop doing that or you think you're, you're comfortable mm-hmm. that's you then, then mm-hmm. you're going to struggle I I seen when you're speaking it reminds me there's a, a superb interview I think it was last year with uh, Jurgen Klopp and he was talking about exactly that he said I surround myself with, you know, good people and people that know things I don't. And he put it amazingly. He said, I'm all right with a few things. I'm pretty good with a couple. And I'm excellent at one thing, probably. And then I get other people to come in that are better than me on the things I don't know. And I think I thought it's just brilliant humility, but it's smart, isn't it? It's just a smart way to be. No, oh, it is. Like there's always somebody that is regardless of what you're doing, if it's the fitness. Yeah. What would be the point of me getting involved in fitness? Now I'm very yeah. lucky to get access to, to Andy Aboyle, who, who yeah. actually, funny you talked about Jurgen Klopp, he, yeah. a couple of years at Liverpool with him. Yeah. He's now the elite performance at the Premier League. And so I've had that. I work with Andy yeah. Coventry, so yeah. I can go to him. You talk about surrounding yourself with, with people, but it's, it's got to be people that get yeah, different to you. Yeah. Get, with different qualities and better yeah. as well. Yeah. That now I'm sure I've got qualities that, that are better than some of my staff or yeah. at whatever I do. Yeah. With some it might not be much, but like you say, like your Jurgen Klopp's a completely different yeah. um and a completely different planet to me. But in terms of that, yeah, I've surrounded or I, I believe I've surrounded myself with the best possible people to help me. Yeah. But we're doing that, the bigger picture is Dundee Football Club. It's not, yeah. not helping me develop as a, yeah, personally, I want to develop. Of course, yeah. you want to do well, but my job is for Dundee Football Club and mm. I had to try and get a staff together that would that, that would help that football club. Yeah. That, at the front of that at the minute as a manager. Oh, yeah. I needed people that, and to be fair, the club were great. The club were great. Yeah. We've done as well. You've got huge credit to John Nelms and Tim Keyes as well because they've allowed me to bring those staff in and, and back me with that and it's it was looking like it was starting to pay off and unfortunately the season came to a halt but mm-hmm. again that goes back to that's those different yeah. Yeah. that you know and, and I think when I'm when I'm talking there I think there's some brilliant kind of pointers and for, for coaches and managers as well people that want to to go into that side of the the game is there any advice or anything that you would say to someone that wants to go into managing and coaching who has been a player, James? What's the what's been the challenge of it? Or but what is your big advice to get the most out of that area of the game? There's a few and I've went to people for advice. Yeah, I mean Jack Ross was a big one. Don't go in, don't go in and make any promises. Yeah, don't go in and say you win the league. Don't go in and do that because then you're putting yourself under real pressure. Mm. Um, the biggest, probably the biggest thing for me is is try and learn to deal with defeat. Yeah, um, I know that's, that sounds silly and, and no, it's not. It's, it makes sense. It makes total sense. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you say that's the biggest thing? Because I think that's the thing that can either make or break you. Yeah. Because if you if you can't deal with that and and you let it come on top of you with the the media, the press, the fans, times of board, it might be, mm-hmm. might be your own players are going. Well, what's the manager doing? Now be prepared for that. That's the the biggest thing is. In, I got, I got hit with a bang. Mm-hmm. Like we, we started the season really well, come through a tough bet for mm-hmm. the group. Um, kept on like six or seven clean sheets in nine games, something silly like that. Mm-hmm. Um, poor first first game of the season, but we came away with a 2-2 draw at the mm-hmm. end which on paper you go, right, okay, first point, away from home, over mm-hmm. the first half. 
And then all of a sudden we lose six, where well, we beat Air, I think, and then we lose, we win a couple of games, beat Air and Alo, I can't remember exactly in what order, but then bang, mm. six two, first mm. time. Never seen it coming. Mm. But we've been great for set plays all season, or all pre season, leading up 10 games maybe, and they conceded a set player, mm. conceded three or four in the one night. Mm. Uh, goals from set plays, and wow, what happened there? And um, now that was a massive learning curve for me. Mm. And you talk about, when I, what I go back to is trying, it's hard because it's hard for me to say, prepare to deal with yeah. defeat. You can only deal with defeat when you, you get that defeat. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why I feel so lucky that I had Golden and Jimmy and Dave and mm. Martin there that night. Mm. We sat there doing the, doing the morning and it was just a tiny case. It was a Friday night game. So, and we weren't coming back into the Monday. So it was a, it, we had agreed that before the game and because the players had a heavy skin. But I'm sitting going, like, this is, how do you deal with us? Yeah. And that's when, I think that's when Gordon really helped me. First, first, mm. he helped me then. And he's, he's helped me. And I've got better at that. But my biggest piece of advice is be prepared to hurt. Yeah. Because you are going to hurt when you, get, when you, you lose games. And that's something that's, you hurt, you hurt as a player. And um, mm. you'll do in, in any job. And, and you feel something's not went quite right or when you hurt but and and I mean this in terms of there's, there's certain levels of a human side mm. the people lose lives but I lost my dad there's mm. so I don't mean you hurt like that when you yeah. lose so I'm taking that away yeah just mean in a professional sense for the ones that are trying to get in then yeah. be be prepared to, to hurt when you lose a game because yeah. it's it sits here and it's it's hard to deal with but then on the flip side find a way to deal with it. And you know, I get what you're saying, totally, James, about that, <clears throat> learning to deal with the defeat, because, you know, almost on a on a, a flip side, positive emotion, when I heard big Duncan Ferguson speaking after he uh, had the few games, it was probably his first game where, where he was leading the team at Everton, and I think he was asked the question, how does it compare to when he was playing? And his reply was even better. He said it was more intense. He said I was had to take responsibility for everything almost. And it summed up what you were describing for to me as well, because that's the positive, but it's also the negative, isn't it? Because yeah. you're not on the park, but everything's on you, kind of. Yeah, and you're the one that look, look when you lose, you're the one that to come for. No matter what's happened in the game, it's and rightly so, because yeah. you're at the forefront of that organisation, that football, you're packing the team, yeah. put the team on, when the team win, the team get the credit, and rightly so, because I've, I've worked ever so hard to, you know, I, never, I never want to change that. Mm. I've got great belief in my players, and, and they've worked ever so hard for me, so I'm more, I'm happy for them. It's more a, a relief for me when I win. Mm. <sighs> but right, we'll get through yeah. next week, or we'll be midweek. But when you get beat, you're right, it's, uh, on your shoulders and Duncan I remember the interview and it was and, and it would have been interesting to hear that interview if he'd have lost that game I, how yeah. that would have flipped because I'm sure he'd have said it was the same yeah. but it was a lot worse yeah. that would have been his answer yeah. because it is when, when you're when you're the manager or when you're in charge of the team then it's when you win great players brilliant when you go enjoy whatever you're doing mm. been great and, and it, there's, there's a pride there and mm. that we followed instructions or they've maybe not followed instructions but they've been yeah. a yeah. it's won the game and I've, you've seen things you've worked on yeah. analyse that through the week great it's an easy week yeah. um, but when you lose it's, it's a tough tough week because you're yeah. analysing what went wrong yeah. and, and that's the negative side of it but you've still also got to then think we were we'll use Alo we, we played Alo just before the break and we, we drew it now with 17 and 17 clear attempts, you scored, you're never going to score 17 goals. Yeah. I've never seen a game like it to draw now now. Yeah. It's the first time I've been at Dundee almost six years now. Yeah. And I've seen us draw a game maybe with Partick Thistle, Ross yeah. Kenney, Inverness, Motherwell, Kilmarnock in the Premier yeah. League and being tiny, mm. grown that going off the pitch. We drew now now with Alwa and get a real kind of rouse and applause going off the pitch because they could Incredible. see yeah. and, and that was a turning point for me and 
and into the dressing room, and it was a weird one because I'm going, what do you say here? The goal, their goalkeeper was great. Yeah. The team were great on the night. We just couldn't find a way to score. Yeah. We, when, we, when we cut it down, we had seven, 17 attempts. Incredible. And that was a big thing for me. Yeah. I, I sat back and, and they're going, I can't believe the fans were applauding. I can't believe the fans were applauding us getting off the pitch. And I'm going, that's, for me, that was a wee turning point. Aye. We had one more home game after that here United and which one which that was our last game and they were the very same. But I wanted that for the start, but and, and, and people kept trying to trip me up with saying, is it hindrance playing at Dents because the fans got on your back? Well mm. what what had they been used to for the last the last, last season they got relegated, so the fans were on their knees. Yeah. They were so down and, and, and they just want to see the club do well. Aye. Case. They don't want to go on players' backs, they don't want to go on, on my back. They want to see something, and, and it took us a while to, to give them that, to give them the pride that they had, they had pride in a Dundee team. And that Alloa, now we had, we had other performances, yep. that were good, and we won games. I think the Alloa one was a real eye opener for me because obviously this, it was a good crowd, it was a yep. night, but it was a good crowd. Um, and we stayed to the very end, obviously, because we were attacking, we were looking yep. for the score. But the way he clapped us off the pitch is before he'd won. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going, what's going on here? I'm used to getting abused, but uh, they seen the effort, they seen the commitment, they seen the drive, and uh, they seen the pride, I think, or, or they felt the pride in their own team that night. And, and for me, you know, it's a pity because the next game is the very same, and that was there right to the very end as well. It's a pity we've stopped because I, uh, I do believe we've now got We'll, we'll get the football club in a, a good place and we'll get the fans back on side. But now, the question, uh, the challenge is keeping it there. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, thanks very much, James. But, hey, a couple of big things, hey, your honesty and just your, your great insights about becoming a manager and and the challenges, but also, you know, the, the privileges and how really it's, it's a science and an art form as well, isn't it? And I think you combine that and how you speak, you know, about being curious about the game, but also the importance of the relationship. So I really appreciate you taking the time, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. No, brilliant. Thanks for having me, Donald. You're Thanks. welcome, Jay.